There's a Nissan Aria behind me and it has been locked in a freezer overnight at minus 20 degrees. I bet you the battery is completely dead. Well, that doesn't look good. EVs lose range in cold weather. It's no secret, but the big question is, always how many miles are lost and we want to find out what drivers can expect from their electric vehicle batteries when the next bomb cyclone hits so we found somebody to loan us a very big freezer to better understand how evs hold up and to learn how nissan cold weather tests its vehicles i'm at the automakers north american technical center in farmington hills michigan where we will actually be deep freezing an aria all electric suv something the company says has never been filmed before This is environmental chamber number two. They have four of these insulated stainless steel line chambers here on campus. And this one is large enough to accommodate two vehicles at the same time to double your testing or potentially double your trouble if things don't go as planned. Now, this chamber is able to go all the way from minus 40 degrees Celsius, that's minus 40 Fahrenheit, up to 80 C which is 176 degrees Fahrenheit, practically hot enough to roast a chicken. And now I'm getting hungry. Alrighty, our test subject for this little experiment is a Nissan Aria SUV, as you just saw the badge right there. This happens to be an M Power Plus front wheel drive model. Now, just so that you know this test is legitimate, that we are actually freezing this vehicle, I brought along a few things that people often keep in their cars and trucks. I mean, I always drive around with a giant novelty thermometer, don't you? I do not trust digital, so it's important to have one of these, and we're gonna set that right here on the windshield so we can see how cold it actually gets in this testing chamber, and I've got a couple other things inside as well. All right, beyond that, you can see We've also got a nice glass of water right here, which we will keep in the cup holder. This should freeze overnight if the chamber is really getting down to the advertised temperature. Additionally, I've got a sandwich. You know, this is representative if you forget your lunch in your vehicle and it's the middle of winter. We're gonna put this right down here in the integrated snacks holster at the bottom of the center console. Now, as for the battery pack, we're starting at about a 17% state of charge, which equates to roughly 39 miles of range. And of course, we'll see what happens to both of those numbers come morning. This vehicle will be frozen to minus 20 degrees Celsius, which to be fair, isn't all that cold, only about minus four Fahrenheit. But still, I wouldn't wanna be trapped in here wearing just a t-shirt and shorts. That wouldn't be very fun. All right, it's about 16 hours later, give or take, and our Aria test vehicle is frozen solid, just like Fry from Futurama, and I can't wait to see what happened to both the battery percentage and the estimated range, which we'll get to in just a minute. But first, we've got Ansu Jamey here and Jeff Tessimer. They're both engineers here at Nissan, and we're gonna talk a little bit about how the automaker tests its vehicle. So guys, why is it so important that you put your products in a freeze chamber? Yeah, the main thing is we want to deliver a product that's ready for our customers. We don't want to find issues from our customers. We want to find them by us. We can make countermeasures and then make sure once they get in the market that they're ready to go. Gotcha. But in a world of climate change, shouldn't you only be doing hot weather testing now? Well, we do both. So we, we can actually, as global vehicles, we need to make sure we account for every global environment. So we'll do hot chamber, we'll do cold chamber, all in the same chamber. Actually. Gotcha, gotcha. Uh, so how many facilities do you have around the world? You've got four of these chambers on the property here at the Farmington Hills campus, yeah. but I imagine there are many more. Yeah, 
anywhere where we have an R&D facility, we need to be able to do this type of testing. So most of our R&D facility, facilities will have at least one of these chambers. Japan being our, our hub of engineering has multiple chambers. Europe, we have multiple chambers also. So this is just one small footprint of our global network. And the chamber is not just a freezer. It can do, it can do more than that, right? Yeah. So what, what are the other capabilities of so this? So we can rules? actually get it all the way up to 80C. We can turn on solar, so it gives the sun load also. We can drop it all the way down to 40C in those ex extreme, extreme conditions. Gotcha. Now, when you're testing a vehicle, what do you expect to happen in these extreme conditions? And what do you hope doesn't happen? Like on the vehicle side, what's going on? I mean, if we're being transparent, right, when you're testing an EV, especially in a cold environment or an extreme environment, you want to make sure that the product doesn't, i.e., fail. That yeah. range is still there, that your SOC, state of charge, is still there. And focusing on those elements, we can run through rigorous testing to make sure that when a customer gets in this vehicle, they can still get their range, they can still get that percent, and they'll be able to get to their destination safe. That's really it. Yeah. So what are some of the differences between an ICE vehicle and an EV that you might see when you're doing a super cold weather test like this? So when it comes to ICE and EV, just I wanna preface that by saying, regardless of which vehicle it is, preparedness is like the key. So even in extreme cold, you don't want your ICE to be just on E. In an extreme cold, you don't want your EV on E. But in this regard, right, you'll see the difference in, so when you turn on your ICE engine, right, you get heat from the engine running. So it's gonna be a little cold, it's gonna take a while. Mm -hmm. In the EV sense, right? It's gonna, electrons do not like the cold. So while you think you may be dropping range, which is a common like, terminology, you're really not. What's actually happening is it takes more energy to actually get that same result. So when you're heating up or when you're driving on the expressway, you do see a little loss, but that's because it takes more energy to move those electrons. Mm -hmm. that's so you've got to warm the pack up. Got to warm the it. pack up. And you know gotcha. what? We have a battery heater in uh, our area. How convenient. Very. It's like you guys planned for this. Or it's almost right? like we love to think of our customer, you know? Gotcha, gotcha. <laughs> so when you're doing testing here or at any of your environmental chambers, how much more extreme is that than your customers might see in the real world? So we will attest components and systems to those extremes. We'll go down to minus 40. On the vehicle side, we'll do some chamber testing. This is accelerated testing. So today we did a 24 hours or close to 24 hour soak at a temperature that most customers aren't gonna see for that prolonged period. But we also do a lot of real world testing. So on Aria, for example, validating ProPilot 2, we drove almost a million miles around this country, including Canada, mm -hmm. just to prove that out. So we saw, this vehicle saw all kinds of temperature conditions. But typically you're not testing to the minus 40 C, at least the whole vehicle, right? So we're not looking for necessarily, when we test it like minus 20, we're looking for performance. We wanna make sure we're giving a good performance even at that temperature. Mm -hmm. At minus 40, we're just hoping the car stays intact and stays in one piece and doesn't have any catastrophic failure. Cause that's a pretty extreme temperature. Very extreme. I don't, I mean, I think the coldest I've ever seen in my life is maybe minus 15 Fahrenheit. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So minus 40 is really freaking cold. <laughs> yeah, I wouldn't yeah. want to be out in that weather without <laughs> multiple layers. <laughs> <on>. Exactly. <laughs> and I, I assume the Aria, mm -hmm. it's passed all of these tests with flying colors. The vehicle's available for sale, of course. Absolutely. No issues there. Absolutely. You tested Aria, yeah. obviously, as you said, in extreme cold, but also in extreme heat, right? Yeah. We have those northern, northern markets. We have southern markets as well. We have global markets. So yeah. we have to cover that wide band or else it's not going to sell well and the customer is going to be unhappy. We yeah. have to cover that type of base and that broad aura. Aura. Yeah. So not Aria specific, but if you're developing a new EV mm -hmm. and you're putting that battery pack, let's say, pushing it to the limit, the, the, the most extreme tests you can do, mm -hmm. What are some of the failures or problems that might pop up when you're doing that? So simply put, right, when you're putting a, a battery through that, just independent, look mm -hmm. at the battery itself. Yeah. Your high charge rates, right? So you're seeing what actually is happening in the battery, so the chemistry, is there any faults? Is there um, any degradation? All these other factors. You have to look at like, what's the customer gonna see, mm -hmm. right? And you were rigorous testing, rigorous testing, charge, decharge, discharge, right? Cold, hot, cold, high. These thermal cycles are happening continuously through the development program to make sure that when we get to our final launch, our final pack, it's safe for customer, it's going to operate the vehicle as accordingly, and we will have no issues on Yeah. So, gotcha. so how, how does cold weather affect EV charging? We had a, 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 very, a period of very cold temperatures in Chicago fairly recently, and a lot of people with EVs were panicking and, and were having difficulty charging. What's happening in the battery pack itself to ha cause those issues. Rightly so, right? Yeah. So like I kind of told you earlier, EVs, 
batteries specifically do not like that cold environment. It's, it's like moving ice, kind of. Mm-hmm. It, it just doesn't work. But the features within EV allow those things to like, change. So, for example, the vehicle we have currently in the icebox or in the chamber, mm-hmm. sitting at minus 20. It's a little aggressive, but if you come out, you can turn on the battery heater. And what that feature does is enable like, the heating of that to get those electrons moving. So that mm-hmm. when you go to a charger, you get a faster charge rate. So you're, you're preconditioning you're before you get to the battery. Charger. Yeah. Exactly. Or in any case, right? As you move the car, as you drive the car, the car knows I'm cold. Mm-hmm. That logic is already built in and Aria will actually heat itself up for those conditions. We consider those elements because that's the nature of EV. Electrons don't like cold, but we sure can speak. Neither do a lot of drivers. I don't either. <laughs> Tell you that. Michigan all Right, right. <laughs> you should you'd be used to it by now. You, you think. think that. November child too. Huh? <laughs> So do we have any predictions for uh, range loss or battery percentage loss when we go check out the Aria? So there's two, there, I want to make a very clear stipulation here, right? As for battery loss, you should see nothing. And the reason why you should see nothing is because the energy you left should be the energy, should be the energy that you get, right? And that's what we do. When yeah. you go inside of that chamber, you'll see the same SOC that you left the vehicle. Correct, but the estimated range, range, yeah. That may update, right? And there are numerous factors that go into updating that, such as your previous drive cycle, such as the climate conditions, such many factors go to your DTE, but what will not change is that energy in the pack. Now, as a driver, when you get in and you drive in cool weather, you may see some drop in that like range number, right? And that's because the vehicle's calculating everything for you. But the energy's still there. It just takes a little bit more to get what you want on it. Absolutely. Yeah. So. Anyway, I want to go check it out. Let's go. So let's go see how well it did at (laughs) minus 20 Celsius. Ooh, it is chilly in here, but you know what they say, it's a dry cold. And I'll tell you, it's not really too bad when you are dressed appropriately for conditions like this. But anyway, As you can see, our Aria here has survived its night in the freezer, and it's no worse for wear aside from a little bit of frost here or there. And our large novelty thermometer even made it through the night without breaking. And you'll notice it's a little bit warmer than minus four Fahrenheit, and that's because we do have the doors open. But let's check out those couple items I left inside the vehicle. Well, that doesn't look good. I mean, I guess I shouldn't be surprised since like water expands when it freezes, but it looks like my drinking glass here has actually shattered. So that is now quite the hazard. We're gonna have to clean that up. Let's see the sandwich down here in the snacks holster. Yep, that is also rock solid. I guess it's more of an ice cream sandwich now. No, I'm not going to eat frozen mayonnaise. No, I am not going to eat frozen sandwich pepperoni. So we're just gonna put that back down there. But now for the moment of truth, we've got to see how much battery percentage we lost and how much the range has gone down after freezing this Aria overnight. So drum roll, please. No, why would you choose that of all things? Play a different drum roll. Mm, That's better. Do it right next time. So we'll get the car started here and we'll see what it says. It's booting up and there we go. It's saying 17% and about 32 miles of estimated range left, which means we lost 0% overnight and only about seven miles of estimated range, which really is not all that bad at all. And if you own an Aria, chances are you're going to have this vehicle plugged into a level two charger at home. So you will be able to precondition the vehicle, will be able to pull electricity from your home's electrical system to preheat the battery, to precondition, the cab so you're not going from just a frozen state out in a parking lot for instance that's what's going to happen most of the time if you own one of these vehicles plus the my nissan app makes it very easy to do both of those things you can punch it in on your smartphone and have your seat heaters on the hvac system going so you get in your aria first thing in the morning it's nice and toasty and ready to hit the road Cold weather has a big impact on electric vehicle range. You know it, and I know it. But the Aria here did surprisingly well at minus four degrees Fahrenheit. The battery percentage remained the same, and this vehicle only lost about seven miles of estimated range, which really isn't too bad. Plus, if you owned one of these things, you're probably gonna be plugging it in overnight, so you should do significantly better than that.
For useful tips about how to deal with range anxiety in the cold, click right over here to check out one of our episodes of EV Basics. It is chock-a-block with helpful information, if I do say so myself. Again? Really? Really?